Tonight's topic is about skiing in the San Juan Mountains. The Durango and Silverton Narrow Gauge Railroad was kind enough to sponsor tonight's event. Uh, we appreciate the train for the sponsorship. This event really isn't possible uh, ongoing without those local sponsors. Jack Turner is a fifth generation Durangoan who learned how to ski on Colbank Pass and was at Purgatory Resort on its opening day in 1965. And that's back when most people had never ridden a lift yet. Jack competed in, uh, on the Durango High School ski team, was a seven time NCAA champion and All American at the University of Colorado, and was a member of the US ski team. He served as ABC Television's expert commentator for Nordic skiing in the 1984 Olympic Winter Games in Yugoslavia. From the time I was a sophomore in high school until a year ago, I spent 47 years where skiing was the, basically the center of my life, and it's not anymore, but it was the source of basically all my great memories and all the sad ones as well. And uh, being invited here is really an honor to talk a little bit about it. And uh, what I remember most is all the friendships and family and support, and by support I mean how much we all helped each other out, especially in the early days, because there was no organized ski patrol, there was no organized packing and that sort of stuff, and it's really this big family, not just like my parents and brothers and sisters, but all the people that you met along the way and the connections you made. And it was also just a hell of a lot of hard work uh, back in the day. And so I'm going to just talk about stuff that happened from before high school, and if you're interested in stuff that happened afterwards, you can ask after this after the show, but basically, um, my family came here first in uh, 1860 with the Baker Party. They homesteaded, right, just a little bit past there. And uh, I don't know who the first generation to ski in our family was, but these kids right here are fourth generation Durangoans in the 1930s. That's my dad and his brothers skiing. And my dad's sitting right here, by the way. Uh, and, uh, his original skis are right here. And I wanted to show you that on the very tip of these skis, it says Groswald Ski Company. And Thor Christian Groswald was an immigrant from Norway that lived in Denver. And his son, Thor, second Thor, was one of my ski jumping coaches when I was on the ski team up at Winter Park. He passed away just a couple of weeks ago. But uh, my ski jumping coach's daughter is right there. So that's uh, Groswald right there, who, uh, so the, I just want to, sh it, it, like throughout, all I can think about is what a family it is. There's the fifth generation of skiers in Durango. That's my brother Jim over there. You can see the strap-in bindings around his overshoes. We skied in overboots, basically, back then. I think that, I remember that pair of skis because it was my first pair that I think had actually metal edges on them. And uh, I had real ski boots. Uh, that's the sixth generation of Durango skiers. Those are my kids. That was, uh, they're now 26 and 28. But it just keeps going on generation after generation. And back in the day, there were several rope toes put up. They weren't actually ropes, they were cables. And I wanted to bring this up to you. They were up, up at Cascade and um, at Columbine Lake, which is right across from where you, the Glendy parking lot. And the family that built these was the Yeager family, who I feel has been greatly overlooked for their contribution to the history of skiing in Durango. And uh, one of the Yeagers, uh, uh, Ronnie, was on the, we were on the high school ski team together. Uh, that's Pat Yeager right there. She was the youngest of nine siblings of the Yeagers. This family was just an incredible group of people for what they did for the area, because they, I had to show you this little thing. See, it says, for special instructions in skiing, called Dick Yeager, and his phone is 847W. <laughs> and they would move these toes around to different places. I think they did it in five or six different places. I can remember by the time I was uh, in middle or junior high, I think there was one on the way out towards Hesperus there. But they were really instrumental in bringing it. But I've got to tell you something about these um, lifts. This is one Chipmunk Hill, right south of Electra Lake. And... Uh, you know, the, the driver for this was an old car that they rigged up, and it was basically, I got to tell you, it was, this is before the days of liability laws, because it was really dangerous, because that cable, that rope is not a rope like we see at Chapman Hill, which, thank God, I think Dolph was the guy who brought that to town, but this was like a quarter-inch steel cable, and I want to show this to you. Can you hold that for a second? Actually, hold it up. This is what my dad and his brothers and other kids used to ride the lift with because it was so 
hard to hold onto that cable, they would put this on like a pipe wrench and just crimp it and ride up on the lift. And so you can see all the little burn marks on this and stuff from where, it, I mean, <laughs> trust me, you had to be tough to ski back then. When I say it was a lot of work, I'm not kidding you. This is uh, on the foot of Engineer uh, Mountain and uh, where the Cascade lift was when they put it up there. And I put this, I actually learned how to ski on Coal Bank, which is a bit above this. Our, back in the day, our families would drive to the top of Coal Bank and ski down where it was cut out for the power lines to a place called Mill Creek. And looking at this reminded me that because I realized nobody knew how to turn. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. Like, you see this one big sweeping turn, people go, yeah, my dad could telemark turn. Trust me. Turns were far and few. And I can remember my, my first couple of days of skiing is that Dad just said, well, just go straight and try not to fall, because if you fall, you've got to walk out past all the flat part. And oh, it was just tr uh, s frightening and quite an experience to learn how to ski. It was like being thrown into a pool and you don't know how to swim. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I remember how cold we used to get. And, uh, and when I talk about support, I can remember people like, um, you know, if you got hurt, your parents or, or if they weren't a very good skier, someone else would have to literally pick you up and carry you out. And we got hurt a lot because our bindings, pretty much, they just strapped you in. That's why they call them bear traps. Um, you know, my memory goes back to skiing at Third Avenue Ski Area as a kid in Hesperus. I rode the La Rope Toe all the time at Hesperus because the tickets were only a dollar and my mom and dad wouldn't give me the buck fifty for the T-bar over there except for on special occasions. But uh, all this skiing... Uh, you know, helped us get a start, and of course the biggest thing that ever happened to Durango is when Ray Duncan built Purgatory. And I can remember opening day, and I will tell you, before we all, I remember coming up, maybe Robert can remember this, or Bobby Duffy, but I remember we all came up to the ski area like the week before, and they made us all ride the lift all the way up the top and all the way back so we could practice riding a chairlift. Because most of us had never seen one before. And so I guess they, I just remember riding it and wondering why we didn't have a seat belt. But anyway, or a life preserve or something. But this is a pretty cute picture on opening day. I can remember it pretty well. I can't remember the speeches. I just remember everybody's big. But in looking at this picture, which I actually got from Purgatory, I was examining this picture. That's my brother Jim, who's sitting right there. And that's me, and that's my little sister Lori, who's sitting right there. So we were 10, 8, and 5 at the time. We recognized that picture because of Jim's ears. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Come on, you know that. Jim and I spent a lot of time skiing together. We had a lot of fun. It was just a wonderful, wonderful time, and everybody got along. And, and uh, this really led to eventually being, you know, trying out for the high school ski team and stuff. And I just kind of wrote some random names down of people I think still live here. I forgot the Zellers. I saw Skippy back there. The Olsons, I think, were on the team, but we had so much fun on that. We'd go out to Hesperus every day after school and ski. We had two buses out there, and we skied uh, cross-country and ski jumping and, and two Alpine events. That, that's uh, Ron Yeager, Daryl Tomberlin, Eric Jacobson, Tony Clark, Bobby Duffy, and me. I had to ski cross-country. I wanted to be an Alpine skier, but my dad always bought me skis too long, and I could never turn them. So... Uh, I'm just going to wrap up here by saying that the lost history of skiing is things like wooden skis. Let me tell you, none of you who skied now on modern skis know what a broken ski is. They literally snapped in half if you hit them the wrong way. Um, kids today have no idea what boot packing is or side packing, and that we had to hike three miles uphill both ways to ski. Kid, most people have no idea what a sits mark is. Remember the little signs that said, fill your own sits mark? So it didn't cause a crater for the next guy to ski into? Jet sticks, knickers. Um, many of you don't know, there were actually a bunch of ski areas around here. There was one out at Forest Lakes and Tamaron, and there was one over at Monticello, Utah, and Stoner. And we had a bunch of ski jumps around, too. We used to have lots of fun. All the ski jumps we had around here, dang, they killed you every time you went off of them. Because I, Dolph built that one up at Purgatory. It was the most dangerous jump in the world because... You would drop out of this cliff, go down, the G-forces would suck you back on your skis, you'd go off, and if you survived the landing, it just kept picking up speed, it, ne it, it never really leveled out, and you'd, one time I remember jumping up there, and the first six guys in front of me all got hauled off to the hospital. <laughs> My mom started crying, and I was up there wondering what the heck's going on, I, 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 luckily I survived, but we got to run out of Hesper's too, so... 
They also don't know about long lift lines. Trust me, nobody knows about long lift lines today and cheap lift tickets. But with that, my summary is I'm just so grateful and thankful for all the people that helped me and were part of my family. You know, people like, you know, Dolph that really got the competitive program started here and my high school coaches, my friends, my family, you know, people like you that contributed more than you took. Thank you.